Half a day. Welcome to D18 tonight. Guao Sinek Delgado joining us in studio are your senatorial candidates, Democrats Jack Hatzik III and Senator Tolina Nelson and Republican Stephen Guerrero. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, we'll be giving each of you 30 seconds, like I mentioned earlier, to introduce yourselves, and we'll start with uh, you, Senator. Half a day. Half a day to the people of Guam. Uh, my name is Tolina Cruz Nelson. I'm number 10 on the Democratic ballot. Uh, some of you may know me by uh, uh, being the oversight chair of public safety and uh, also recall the time when I was asked to resign my position between the chief of police and the director of corrections. Uh, I believe that they called me to resign because when something didn't look right, we asked a question. When something didn't smell right, we dug a little deeper to see where the stink was coming from. And when, we were, when things were unquestionable, we demanded the truth. Okay. So thank you for having me and allowing me to serve you this term. All right, Mr. Hattick. Half a day. Buenas todos amzu tafta Guam. I'm Jack Hattick the third, and uh, I'm a local boy. I was uh, born and raised here on Guam, and I was a teacher with the Guam Department of Education for 13 years. Uh, I'm, I'm a service member. I'm in the Guam Army National Guard, proudly serving, and um, uh, I have a lot of experience in the private sector as well, being an asset management coordinator. And I want to take my experience, and I want to take the next step and be your working class senator in the 35th Guam legislature. Thank you for having me today. All right, thanks for being here, Mr. Mm -hmm. Guerrero. Off a day, I'm Steve Guerrero. Um, I'm from the village of Derido. I'm married to Nora Lewarki Guerrero, and I have three kids, Katie Mason and Stevie the second. I am a proud government Guam retiree out of the Bureau of Budget Management. I've served there about 36 years. Um, I've also served a short thing as the director of the Department of Labor. And within, within uh, those years, I've, I've been able to garner a lot of experience and stuff, and then I want to bring it back to the government of Guam and serve the people of Guam as their next senator. Okay, right. great. Again, thank you, the three of you, for being here. Um, so the first question, as we wait for a bunch of our viewers to come onto our Facebook live stream and put those questions there for the three of you, um, pretty much straight to it, do you think those held in positions of trust over youth, such as teachers, priests, etc., should be given harsher penalties for violating that trust? And we'll start with you, Senator. I believe that the people of Guam uh, do uh, have people that oversee them and do uh, require a, a specific amount of trust uh, to our leaders in the community. Uh, the harsher requirements, of course, would have to we'd have to look a little deeper and see what is the what is the uh, allegation or the penalty that is being caused on them, and perhaps a, a reasonable consequence in return. Okay. Senator. Um. Being a former educator, I understand that we're held to a higher standard, and that higher standard is uh, based on the public's trust. However, um, I think that uh, when you break the law, there are consequences, and you should be made to, um, to answer to those consequences. If uh, the legislative body uh, decides to change the laws and, and the people vote um, to put them in to do that, then we have to respect those, uh, those laws that get changed. Okay, Mr. Guerrero. I believe that every position within Governor Guam or in the private sector is, is held to a standard that the public demands that, that they serve. Um, their capacity and their, and their performance in the job really dictates exactly the end results at the end of the day. But should anything go away with their performance, and I, I, I believe they're also subject and entitled to, to fair treatment for their um, process, due process until proven otherwise. All right, very well. All right, so this first question comes from our Facebook viewer, Terry Cadahay. She asks that the current administration is aggressive in its efforts to deport non-U.S. citizens convicted of serious crimes. What is your position on this, and are you in favor or against this, and why? And we'll start with you, Mr. Hatton. Um, I'm a firm believer that you're, if you're an immigrant and you come to Guam and you commit a, a serious crime, you're going to be deported. And that's what needs to happen here. Uh, our resources are limited. Our, our people don't, don't deserve actions like that from migrants that come to our island. And so we need to set a standard and work with the federal government. Once these crimes are identified and these, these migrants have been uh, given a, a due process, they need to be deported straight away. Okay. Mr. Guerrero? Well, you know, the um, United States, which is Guam is part of, is, is supposed to be the land of opportunity. And with this compact impact with free association with, the, with our federated states and uh, neighboring countries or islands, you know, we give them the opportunity to make the best of themselves here. But they're also governed and they're also limited by the same policies and regulations and laws that our local people are, are, are responsible to, to uphold and heal to. All right. And Senator? Uh, as a people, uh, we have the spirit of Anafa Malik. 
And when you are a guest in someone's home, we ask that you ask respectful and responsible. Uh, surely uh, those that uh, commit crimes uh, don't value the, uh, the character, the cultural values that we hold. Mm -hmm. And perhaps they, before upon entering into our island, they need to be educated of the, the expectations of them and, and our cultural heritage. All right, very well done. Thank you so much. That concludes our first round. We'll uh, head over to a quick break. D18 continues after this. Smiling is a natural response to joy, happiness, and excitement. Your smile reveals a lot about who you are. A healthy, beautiful smile can brighten your appearance and be an invitation to conversation and friendship. It is often one of the first things people notice about you. Now, thanks to the advancements in dentistry, you can have the smile you have always wanted, giving you an improved smile that looks and feels great. My silver fillings that I have, they're getting older in my mouth and I need to replace them. So I've started to do that and I've replaced them with the white fillings and I've had really great success with that. It looks good, they feel natural, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the bleaching. I want my, a white look all around my mouth. Welcome back to D18 Tonight. We're taking your questions on Facebook Live with us in studio. Are your senatorial candidates? We'll get straight to the next one. Coming from Ronald Aguanya, he says past candidates have not addressed this matter. FSMs over fish are reefs using scuba and spear. Are you in favor of strict regulations in banning scuba and spear fish? Um, we'll start with you, Mr. Grow. Well, you know what, Nick? Um, that's a good question. For me, uh, I think many years ago, the government of Guam actually implemented, uh, you know, a natural preserve around the island simply because of the lack of or, or the resources of our natural fish habitat being depleted or being destroyed by overfishing. And I think right now um, it is it is a way of life for most of the Pacific Islanders and all these people coming in. They, we need to regulate it to a certain point. I prefer maybe self-sustaining type of, type of situation rather than commercial use. Okay. All right, Senator. Well, culturally, right, we, we, we do a lot of spear fishing here on our island. Uh, it is important to implement policies or laws that help the sustainability of our fish. It's, it's a valuable resource to us, and we use it to, you know, a necessity to feed ourselves and to provide for our family. Now, in the event of scuba, uh, scuba mm -hmm. diving with the, with the spearfish gun, of course it causes some complications and disrupts our natural environment. So, yes, I would strongly oppose or I would strongly support uh, banning scuba spearfishing. Okay, yes. Mr. Hatzik. Uh, the, with the advent of our uh, reefs and how, how not, you know, they're not doing very well now, we need to, we need to put uh, seasons, maybe we can institute seasons for fishing now so that we can make sure that the recovery of our fish happen. Uh, scuba, there's, there's, no, absolutely should never be any scuba diving for spearfishing. You should be down there recreationally enjoying our waters. 
but uh, I too would support a ban on scuba spearfishing. Okay. All right, so this next question comes from Brian Isaac, and Brian writes, recently we have seen measures to increase uh, taxes, um, but we rarely see any measures to reduce the size um, of the government. And so his question um, is, the size of Gulf Guam, such as reducing the number of mayors, um, would you be in support of reducing uh, the size of Gulf Guam pretty much, such as with the mayors and, and vice mayors and such? And we'll start with Senator. Well, at the current point, right, there is a level of distrust in the government because we've seen uh, elaborate spending practices and tax increases. And just this past weekend, we voted for a budget bill that really, I voted for the budget bill not to increase taxes, but to ensure that the basic government services are provided to the people. For example, Speaker Cruz's budget bill for the first time in decades provides full, fully, funding, fully funding GMH. Uh, also, we had to look out for our fire, firefighters. We have 45 recruits that were in limbo and not sure that they would be employed this upcoming fiscal year. Okay. We also had to ensure that teachers were able to teach in the classroom uninterrupted and that we, you know, the children didn't have to worry about furlough days. And thanks and for so, your response. Time's up. Thank you. And we'll move on to Mr. Hattie. Same question. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say what uh, a courageous uh, job the senators have done. It's, it's not a, a, a very easy task to pass the budget. Uh, I think there was there was room for more. I think we definitely, I was disappointed that we, we cut the amendment to defund the deputies. I think there's a lot that we can do. Uh, the people of Guam, they want the change. Uh, they started in the 34th legislature. They're going to continue to do that in the 35th. We have to look at ways where we can streamline. We need to make necess unnecessary cuts to unclassified employees. And uh, we just need to make government more functional for our people. Okay. Mr. Guerrero. Well, I tell you what, uh, being in the government for the last 36 years, I, uh, there, is, there is room for improvement, there's, there's room for reorganization, there's room to consider what services are important to the public and what services the public are, is willing to pay for. Now, with that being said, um, you know, right now the government is basically the only entity that provides services to the public at, at large. If we, if we were going to reduce any type of services or streamline the government, again, I go back and say, you know, People, you need to decide what services are you willing to pay for and what services the government can provide. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to take uh, another quick break. More questions to come on D18 tonight continues. Don't go anywhere. Win adventure in the ITME Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16th to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITME postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. It's a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. Our workforce is changing and our students need to be prepared for the challenges that are ahead. I graduated high school at GCC when we could learn a trade and even prepare for college. Our students deserve schools that are safe and books and resources that help prepare them for their future. A Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration will rebuild Simon Sanchez, fix our schools, integrate technology in the classroom, and expand access to trades. I'm in to help get us there and we humbly ask for your vote. I'm Approve this message. Introducing the Alpha Plus app. Pay insurance premium online using the pay feature. Get estimate quotes for auto, home, commercial, and other insurance offered by Alpha insurers. View our list of exclusive deals available at our partner merchants. So download the all new Alpha Plus app on Google Play or the App Store. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. Ready for some family summer fun? You guessed it! Sago Manyago is having their fourth annual kids carnival. Come to the Governor's Complex Lawn in Adaloop on Saturday, August 18th. The end of summer fun begins at 4 p.m. and lasts to 7 p.m. Free admission and free entertainment with children activities, music, dancing, and much more. Sago Manyago's kids carnival on August 18th at the Governor's Complex in Adaloop. Special thanks to Bank of Guam, Community First Federal Credit Union, Cabo Select Care, Addis Trust and Investment, Take Care, Stay Well, Guam Regional Medical City, Matson, and to all of our community sponsors. 
GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Welcome back. Let's jump into our next round of questions, the three that's here today. And this one uh, comes from Kin Camacho. If elected, how confident are you that you can work with your peers in the governor's office to create, pass, and sign a clean, balanced budget? And we'll start with you, Mr. Hatley. Thank you. Thank you, Kin, for that question. Um, you know, there are a lot of new candidates. And new candidates, uh, in my experience, have a, a better track record, honestly, of, of working with each other. I'm confident that I can reach across the aisle with some of my Republican colleagues to pass a clean budget bill. We all began public service with an idea of what we want to do and how we want to best serve the people. And that's my approach. It's going to be that fresh new approach to work together. Okay. Mr. Grau. Well, you know, Nick, I worked in the government for 36 years. I've, I've served nine different administrations out of the Bureau of Budget. I work very well with any administration, whether it be Republicans or Democrats. I'm a very good listener. I'm more of a doer than I am a speaker and talking, but uh, I have no problem work with any, any, any one of my colleagues, whoever, whoever the 14 may be across the floor, to get, get the job done. Okay, and Senator Nelson. The people elected us to serve them. It doesn't matter the differences we have amongst our colleagues that, we're, that are in the legislature. The point is, is we're here to serve and we're here to find a solution. And it is our job to, to ensure that whatever our decisions make, uh, we look, at the, uh, look out for the welfare of the people. All right, so this next question, um, let's see, this one comes from Francis Kenga Salas. Do you agree that education is a priority? It's a pretty simple question there, but they had more to it. The teachers and administrations are the forefront of building our future for the next generation. So they talk about uh, your, what are your ideas to raise uh, and prevent more budget constraints for the entire education department? Uh, and we'll start with you, Mr. Guerrero. Of course, education is, is the priority for the, and, and it is the future of, of, of any generation. As far as the teachers, the teachers, of course, they're on the front line. They are the ones that actually teach these kids what it is they need to learn out in the real world. As far as budget, uh, budget allocation, budget funding for them, I will do our darn best as, as far as the legislature is to make sure that education is a priority and make sure the funding that the education get is sufficient enough to carry and make them carry out their mission. All right, Senator Nelson. Well, we just passed the budget, and the budget bill did prioritize education, public safety, and health. And this is one of the things that we need to stick to is our core pillars, because without education, we will have an uncertain future. And, of course, as a teacher, I value education very much. Our children are our future, and we need to invest in them. Okay. That's tragic. As an asset manager working uh, in conjunction with DOE, I visit schools every day. Literally, I was at a Stumbo uh, middle school, um, elementary school, earlier today. What I would like to see is a little bit more in the budget. We put the property tax, the real property tax into the territorial education um, fund because we, we need to, to upgrade our facilities. The best thing we can give our teachers is great facilities. And so that's what I intend to do. We need to stop raiding uh, funds like TEF so that we can stay in there, get the procurement done, repair our schools, and give teachers safe working and learning environments for our students. Okay. So this next question comes from Brian Isaac. He says, illegal dumping is rampant in our island. What will you do to help stop the destruction of our beautiful island? And we'll start with you, Senator. Uh, no one intended for our island to be a dumping ground. Right. And it, a lot of it starts at the home. We need to start educating our children on where to put trash in the proper place and perhaps reduce the cost of tipping fees, but also increasing the fines for those who break the law and start dumping on our island. And Mr. Hasek? Absolutely. We need to work with our mayors. Our mayors are the lifeline. They're the pulse of the people. They know where these, these uh, dumping grounds. I was looking for my lost dog, and I drove around Matagwek, and you can literally count the number of sites that are there. So we're going to work with the mayors to identify those sites, and we've, we've got to help the people. I understand that it, is, it is, starts cultural and in the home, but we have to help the people and give them an opportunity so they can bring their goods, their white goods especially, instead of, you know, throwing them uh, in, the, in the jungle mm -hmm. at, at night. Yeah, and Mr. Mm -hmm. You know, to add on to what they both said, and it's, it's very important, I think one of the most important things we, we, we seem to fail in government is, is actually the enforcement of laws. 
sometimes it's, it's the, only, the only thing left to do. We, we tried everything else, and if it doesn't work, you need to go to the harsher things. And unfortunately, I live in Deriro, mm -hmm. and it's the, it is probably the worst village of all the villages in the island that, that incurs that have uh, problems with illegal dumping. So I think if you enforce the laws that are already in the books, you don't need to create any new ones. I think you might see some progress in that direction, going yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, the, the Dereto mayor was telling us after we've seen all those videos circulating on social yes. media with you know, people that we saw illegally dumping. And so definitely an issue here. Um, yes. So this uh, next question uh, coming <coughs> from Sandra Stanley, do you consider a public library as being part of an education category? And we'll start with uh, you, Mr. Hattie. Thank you. Um, I remember my days in high school going down to the Nevis Flores Memorial Library. This is a critical thing we need to do. A lot of, the, a lot of people will push education to technology, mm -hmm. but actually reading and writing, that takes place right at the book, and it's important. So we need to reevaluate, especially what we do with public education. I know that we tied it in with the, the public library system is tied in with others, not necessarily the Department of Education, but we need to bring that back, because I would like to bring my five-year-old son to a library one day. Okay. Square. You know, although t today modern technology, social media, Twitter, Facebook, you know, you can get basically all the information you can in, in a library. There are still those that are not just, you know, technically inclined to use the electronics today and still need that, that hands-on. Um, I'm one of those people. I prefer to have things in my hand, um, not, not an not a iPhone or something like that, it's, but something paper that can have value so I can relate to it. And, and I think it is important to keep those libraries still open for those people. Okay. Don't want that. Thank you. Senator Nelson. During one of our public hearings, we did have a lot of the Guam Public uh, Library's uh, representatives come forward and explain some of the hardships that they had to endure. Uh, this caused a great concern. And so uh, during uh, our deliberations on the budget, I really tried to advocate so that we can ensure that our public libraries stay operational and also the satellite areas in the villages because some of the families, they don't have transportation. But it's definitely, we need to have the education available to them after school, and the library is just the spot to do it. Okay, thank you so much for your responses. So we're going to take another quick break before wrapping up the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep it here. D18 Tonight continues after the break. <laughs> Summer is here. And at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event. Right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab. Or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card. Where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. It's Cheesy Bites Pizza Season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip, pop icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out pizzas the hut. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. I've worked with everyone running for governor. I know what they've done and what they haven't. There have been so many missed opportunities to prevent the crises facing Guam. I know Lou would never have allowed GMH to go without resources. She would have closed the revenue loopholes so that the $8.1 billion military buildup generated additional revenue for Guam. She'll make sure our government lives within its means. I'm Carlotta Leon Guerrero, a Republican, and I'm voting for Lou and Josh. Please vote for them too. It's Cheesy Bites Pizza Season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip, pop icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out pizzas the hut. Welcome back to D18 Tonight. We're getting close to wrapping up our show, but up next is our exclusive digital show, The After Party, with Sabrina salas Matanani and Chris Barnett and the analysts. Now let's get back to the questions with the candidates here. Uh, and this one coming from Robert Camacho. What political status would you like for the people of Guam? 
statehood, free association, independence, commonwealth, or status quo. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Guerrero. I've always taken the position of statehood, and the reason being is that I think with the other three options, uh, it, does, it will never secure our, our legal right to be U.S. full-fledged citizens. Uh, most people don't understand that uh, right now, if you're born in Guam, you're a citizen by statute. You're not citizen by, by, blood, by birthright. Unlike in, in the mainland, if you're born in the mainland, that right can never be taken away. Unlike you're on Guam, if, you're, if you are born on Guam, you are given statutory birth rights, I mean statutory citizenship, but at the stroke of a pen to amend the Organic, the Organic Act, that citizenship can be taken away. Okay, thanks for your response. Senator Nelson? I believe that all people should have the authority to govern themselves, mm -hmm. and I believe Guam should be ready for independence, mm -hmm. but it's a slow, steady march. Right now, what we need to do is hold the U.S. accountable to ensure that we have a, a fairer agreement with some of the policies that they implement on us and especially the, some of the limitations in the Organic Act. Mm -hmm. And yes, definitely push for independence. Okay, Mr. Hattig. I'm glad I was asked this question. And um, I believe now more than ever, we have the opportunity to set ourselves up for success and independence. The United States government owes us this opportunity first to choose. We need to choose our self-determination. But now Chamorros and, and everyone living on Guam really can choose independence and feel good about it. Because the last plebiscite, everybody was like, yeah, we want to be by independence, but we didn't know how we were going to do it. Now with technology, now with industry, the United States government owes us that opportunity. And we, we should march slowly, though. We shouldn't march too far ahead, get our children involved, because that's really where it's going to happen. All right. Thank you so much. Now it's time to wrap things up. It's the final push for you guys to speak out there to our voters and make that uh, say whatever else you want to say to them out there. And we'll start with you, Senator Nelson. First of all, I'd like to thank the people of Guam for allowing me to serve them this term. And during this time, I learned that uh, service to others isn't easy, and it shouldn't be, because to, the privilege to serve the people of Guam is something that, uh, is something that every one of us aspire to do. Uh, in this time, I did not uh, have a chance to accomplish everything that we hope to do, and this upcoming term, I look to focus on those suffering from drug addiction and also helping families cope with addiction in their home, and also helping our homeless children as I've come to learn that it is a very big issue on our island. Okay. Thank you, and Tito Smasi. And your number on the ballot? Oh, I'm number 10 on the Democratic ballot. All right, well thank done. Thank you. Ms. Chadwick. Hafadei todos, Afanietlus, Guam. Thank you so much for listening, for tuning in. I'm Jack Hatzik III. I'm number 11 on the Democratic side. I'm just a working uh, father, son, husband, um, uh, son of Guam, and a service member. And I want to I wanna give a message that you too can be involved in government. Please join us. You don't have to stay on the sidelines anymore. That's what my candidacy is about. It's about working class, getting involved, getting to understand your government, and providing the services that you deserve as a people. Thank you so much. Number 11, Democrat. All right. Mr. Guerrero. Well, for day again, I am Steve Guerrero. I'm number 10 on the Republican ballot. I just have this passion to continue my services to the government of Guam, not, this time not as a, as a bona fide government employee, but more of a senator, all the way there is a salary that comes with it, but it's just this drive, this, 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 um, this feeling I've, I've had for the last six years since I retired, and it's time for me, I think, to give back to the people of Guam what the people of Guam gave me such a great opportunity to serve them as, as, as a full-time government employee, but now hopefully as a, your senator. Okay. And your number on the ballot? Number 10. Number oh, right. 10 on the Republican side. Okay. Well, best of luck to all of you. And, of course, thank to you. all our so viewers much. out there, thank you so much for being here. To all our viewers, be sure to tune into our Facebook page. You can continue to put your questions out there so that the candidates can get right to them. Stick around. The After Party is up next. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's wardrobe by Royal Bix.